Hi everyone, welcome back to the Nice Guy Show. I'm the Nice Guy, Phil Torsivia. I'm here with Kathy, Dr. Michelle, and another Michelle here is the interior designer. Before we get into interior design, I wanted to also ask you about arthritis. Is it something that you're you're uh, hereditarily predisposed to, to get? or So I there's, I guess, two different types. Yeah. You can have a more uh, genetic, hereditary, or predisposed type of arthritis, like the juvenile arthritis, the you know ANA, is a different test you would see if you have that genetic marker, um, or it could just be due to toxic buildup um, in your system. So you can definitely run tests to see if you're predisposed, but you can still prevent it. I wouldn't, you know, obviously use it as an excuse, take care of your liver, drink some water, Healthy foods, move around. Drink the green water yeah, that you have. Fill water, yeah. yeah, and then you're kind of good to go. Excellent. So, yeah. All right, let's get into the interior design thing. So first, my little story about that. You'll yeah. like this. I went on a I went on a speed dating thing. He loves speed dates, by the way. I, well, I haven't done it in a while. I, I went on a speed dating thing in Del Mar, where you're from. Okay. And uh, there I met a girl who I was interested in. She said she was interested in me. And then as we, uh, when we actually connected after the speed date, it turns out she has a boyfriend. But she's an interior designer. And I was new to the area. She's like, yeah, so I could probably help you if you want. I can come over and take a look and maybe help you with your furniture. Was she speed dating for work, you think? Yes, that's what she was doing. Oh, isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah, and I fell for it. But <laughs> this, this is back in the day when the, you know, the economy's booming, too, and I had extra money. And I'm like, eh, whatever. Sure. You know. And I just moved, and I, I, I swear I paid at least six or $7,000 just to move my furniture out here. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, and then she gets rid of it all. No. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Don't say no because that's yeah. pretty much what happened. She came over and she said, "That's got to go. That's got to go. That's got to go. That's got to go. All these pictures got to go." And I was like, "Oh no!" And I just paid all this money. I'm like, "What do I do?" She goes, "Donate it or sell it. Just get rid of it." Oh, oh wow! Oh, was it like a black leather poofy sofa? It was worse than that. It was. I had, <laughs> this is my even even my my ex wife. I mean, when, when we were married, I, I fought her to get this thing, but. It, the kind of sofa that every guy likes and every girl hates. <laughs> it was a uh, L-shaped, high back, um, sectional, right? But the coolest thing about it was between the, the two seats that face forward, there was a table that came down. Of course. And you could put like, a, it had a <gasps> cup holder, you cup put a beer in. I was it's poofy, it had cup holders that were It was a little poofy. <laughs> and, the, holders, and the best thing, the, heater, shut up. And the best thing is it was teal. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, that's ouch. the best thing about it. Yeah. Oh. That was the best thing. No, but no, the table was the best thing. But the, I love that. So I would sleep on that sofa sometimes, just not even go to bed because I just loved it so much. And whenever I had guys over, oh, this is the best sofa ever. <laughs> I'd go and be like, you've oh got to get rid of that. So anyway, um, guys need, I think, usually guys need most of the help, especially if you're a bachelor. Sure. You know, you want to take down the uh, the old 70s rock posters. Right, and, and get right, rid of the, the beer or signs. Or 80s rock posters. And the beer <laughs> sign, yeah, the flash <laughs> right. and the signs right. and all that. Right. So, um, yeah, what have you seen in, in bachelor pads that you've had to correct? Um, you know, it varies. I think, you know, I think there's something cool to have, like, mementos that you enjoy mm -hmm. in your space, but um, you don't want it to scream college dorm room or right. bachelor pad or you know right. beer cave especially if you're dating and <laughs> beer cave. you know um you know if you want to have a, just a cool hangout spot the guys go to a bar you know That's if you point. want if you want to date and have company over or have a, a girlfriend over she needs to be comfortable too right you want to make it comfortable make and inviting comfortable. right so it should right. still look like you but maybe more grown-up version right of you and not well, the frat boy version. Yeah, the, the designer, when when uh, she came over and had me get rid of everything, one of the first things that she said is, you need a pool table here. And I'm like, well, I don't play pool. She says, you will. And you have a pool table. <laughs> right. I said, well, why do I need a pool funny. table? She says, because like you, you want your house to be inviting. You want to have parties oh, at your house. Funny. And this gives people things to do. And pool is fun and sexy, too, because women are bending over and playing. Oh, it's my gosh. Yeah, so she, did you get the pool table? I got the pool table. <laughs> oh, you, have you used the pool table? Not that yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. How many times have you actually played pool on the pool? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very good. Very good. Touche. Exactly. Touche. Yeah. Not, so if we ever go out and play he has pool, the you'll know that. Yeah, there's the a condom yeah. dispenser. You put yeah. the quarters in, you get condoms yeah. in the morning after pilling. Right. right. No, I, I suck exactly. at pool, which, yeah, you know, I have a pool too. And then, then she goes into there was an office area I had where I had a desk and a nice high back chair. And she said, that needs to go. I'm like, well, it's an office. I want to work out of here. She says, no, right. this needs to be a poker room. So I had to put a poker table in there, and yeah. So she was making it. I think more, more like her. a bachelor pad, right. and yeah. you know, like she, an adult version. She wanted yeah. to be a party place, yeah. which I mean, right. yeah. I was new to the area, single guy. So yeah. I mean, so, I mean yeah. But so when you go into a place, though, you're, you're not just looking at furniture. You're looking at artwork and colors and paint and draperies, the whole, everything, yeah, right? The whole thing, and I think that's 
you know, why most the people that hire interior designers do so because mm -hmm. people have a tendency to go out shopping and they do it piecemeal. You know, right. they find the sofa they like, they buy that. They find a piece of art they like, they, like, they buy that. And when they get it home, it sometimes doesn't work. Doesn't fit. All together. Yeah. So I think that's where an interior designer can be beneficial because they will help you create an overall game plan. So whether they're doing the shopping for you or the clients doing the shopping themselves, they, you know, it can help save them time and money. Right, so it can work two different ways. They pay you, like, an, I don't know how you do it with your business, but they could pay you like an hourly fee for your work. Um, or you can charge them based on the things you buy. Because I, I know that my interior design, she would like just come over with a handful of stuff and then just hand me an invoice. Like, right. this is what this stuff costs. And I assumed that she was either marking this stuff up or getting right. a discount on it herself that she wasn't passing on. So. I mean, there's, there's different ways to bill, and it all depends mm -hmm. on what the client's comfortable with. I mean, some interior designers, specifically in residential design, will be very straightforward. This is how much I bill. This is what I bill for. Um, so you know up front what you're in for. Mm -hmm. um, some designers bill based on the cost of goods. So, you know, if you purchased X amount of, you know, dollars, she'll get a percentage of that. Mm -hmm. um, typically, though, if, if we're billing by the hour or a flat fee, we'll carry the savings that right. we get to you, and that's right. kind of an incentive to use that interior designer. Yeah, because you guys get savings, right? Because you buy yeah, a lot of I stuff. Yeah, I mean, and we buy a lot of stuff, and yeah. plus sometimes we have access to, um, to the trade-only places mm -hmm. that you want to necessarily as a consumer, mm -hmm. so sometimes you're able to get, like, unique, one-of-a-kind things. Trade-only as in trade? trade, trade. Only as, like, to the interior design industry. So as okay. an interior designer... Gotcha who's reselling stuff, I can go in and purchase stuff that you cannot walk in off the street and do. Right. And um, so sometimes you're getting unique, cool things that mm -hmm. your neighbor doesn't have or that some of the big box stores. Neat. Now, have. where do so, you get your stuff, though? Do you usually go like a Z Gallery or it depends on the client? It depends on the client and their budget. I mean, you know, we're not just personal shoppers. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, I think, have a tendency to think that. So um, since we are problem solvers and we're trying to make the most of your budget, it could be a mix of things. It could be a mix of some of the big box stores like Crate and Barrel, Z Gallery, and then sometimes you throw in some custom things mm -hmm. because not always can you find what you're looking for mm -hmm. in those stores. So it's just, it's a combination that works best. You probably find things at Target okay. even, right? Yeah. I've seen oh, yeah. You know, some good stuff at Target. Yeah. So yeah. when people hire you, do they typically hire you to do like the whole house or to do a room or to do like maybe the downstairs but not the upstairs? Or it just... depends. You know, I have a client <laughs> Now that they're doing their entire home, okay. you know, they start from scratch, and then I have, you know, another client who wants to do it by phase. Okay, you know, so it really depends on what they're looking for. So you, know? you get into like carpet, tile, Everything. like marble, like right. okay, right. So I mean, you could be doing the finishes, you could be doing a uh, a complete remodel to where you're redoing the lighting and the right. layout. So yeah, you know, I think that's a big thing to remember too. That again, the designers aren't just shoppers or decorators; right. they can actually. Be remodeling your homes and oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. so do you work a lot with like architects and mm -hmm. home developers? Yeah. And okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, so you set up a theme for the house, kind of too, right? Yeah, so then that's how the so the artwork all kind of matches and right. Flows. I mean, you don't get too themey per right. se, but definitely you're going to create a you know a game plan for the client mm -hmm. and pay attention to their needs and their styles, but at the same time, you want to push them a bit, you know. So again, you're not just shopping for them and giving mm -hmm. them exactly what they want per se. Um, but you do want to kind of help them push the envelope, and usually the best ideas come from that. You know, they surprise yeah. themselves with yeah, what the, they're open to. The one thing I liked about my designer is she, she would bring things in and just put them places and look and say, what do you think of that? No, all right, we'll move this over here. How about that? You know, so you could see, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the things that, that didn't fit, she would just take back and, you know, exchange. Right. So right. that's a good way to do it. So that way you can see the different things that you're, you're putting in your house. You can see in place and mm -hmm. decide whether and, or not you, you know, want to keep some them. clients want to be really involved. You know, they want to go shopping with you, and sometimes that's when the designers tend to bill a little bit more. Right. You know, there's, there's more hand holding. Yeah. And some clients just they leave it completely that was up me. to you. Yeah, you just uh, um, yeah. And maybe that could be a male thing too, but I think mm -hmm. the client should be somewhat involved because you're not creating a showroom for them, you're creating their house. Right. You know, so it needs to be functional and reflect them. But again, they, they want to look stylish and hip and designed. Sure. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, we come in. So how many clients do you take on at once? Or um, A lot. But, you know, <laughs> with, with this one, it's it's funny because um, business, because the economy has slowed down quite a right. bit. Because okay. not everyone has seen the value of hiring a designer, right. um, perhaps. But um, things are picking back up again. I think the key is just to get pregnant because then <laughs> the jobs roll in. <laughs> yeah. And you know, all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm gonna, how, do I, how do I juggle this? So uh, I've been lucky, though. The, the projects are coinciding with the schedule okay. of this guy. So it's, <clears throat> it's worked out good. So what do you think about feng shui? Is there, is there such a thing? Do you 
subscribe um, to that? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't practice feng shui. I mean, there's definitely people that are feng shui experts mm -hmm. out there. Um, a lot of it can be common sense. I don't want to minimize what feng shui consultants do, but um, it's all based on function and a healthy environment, which essentially what you know um, interior design is about is making sure the space is healthy and functional and beautiful for the people that inhabit it. So and feng shui kind of plays into that. But it can get very specific, like, you know, don't hang a, a mirror here, don't have pointy objects here, you know, because it's all based on energy mm -hmm. and stuff, so. Hmm. All right, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there's also, you know, there's, there's tapestries, there's, there's paint colors, there's all, there's all kinds of things. We'll, we'll get into a little more of that in, in the next segment, but yeah, it's, it's just fascinating to me how much was all was involved. There were yeah. things I didn't yeah. even think of, like even in the kitchen, knowing what bowl to put as a centerpiece and what to put in the bowl, real right. fruit, fake fruit candles and all right. that um, but yeah I learned a lot doing it I, I paid a lot <laughs> well, learned that's a lot they learned that yeah that's why right? I, yeah. I mean I still have all the stuff so she did a good job whether her way of getting my business was uh, ethical <laughs> or not I don't know but it's she got me. Like, hmm. all right we'll continue yeah. to talk with Michelle about interior design when we get back next segment <laughs>